Um, it's the public information hearing and the regular CPC meeting agenda. Um, it's going to be held in the Don B. Griffin Room, Howitch Town Hall, <coughs> 732 Main Street, Howitch, Mass., 06645 at 6 p.m. Thursday, June 9th, 2022. Um, we have a member that's a little bit late, so I held off for a few minutes, but we're going to open up the board to the meeting now. So, call to order the taping over the usual taping <coughs> notification. As required by law, the town may audio or video record this meeting. Any person intending to either audio or video record this open session is required to inform the chair. Welcome all guests. And can we have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Can I have a roll call vote? And please, would you identify yourself and the entity that you represent for the CPC. No. Uh, so in other words, um, my name's Dave Nixon. Right. I'm the liaison for the Recreation and Youth Commission. Joe McFarland, liaison for Housing Committee. Kathy? Yeah, Kathy Green, liaison for Real Estate and Open Space. <clears throat> John Ketchum, liaison for the Conservation Commission. Elizabeth Harder, Rep liaison from the Housing Authority. Thank you. The officially open now. Um, the Howard Community Preservation Committee will hold a public meeting and hearing on Thursday, June 9th, 2022 at 6 p.m. in the Don B. Griffin Room. As part of its study, the committee shall hold one or more public informational hearings on the needs and the possibilities and resources of the city of town regarding the community preservation possibilities and resources, notice of which will be posted publicly and published for each two weeks preceding a hearing in the newspaper or in the general circulation in the city of the town. Learn about the act and discuss the possible projects consistent with the acts and to review the submittal guidelines, period. The act, includes related, the act includes projects related to open space, community housing, historic preservation, and recreation. Application information is readily available at the Howitch at http slash slash www.howitch slash ma.gov slash community <coughs> preservation committee. If you have any idea for projects that would meet the requirements of the Community Preservation Act, please bring them forward. Okay, we got all that out of the way now. So, um, would anybody, we have members of the floor, would you like to speak? Come on up. Come on up and please identify yourself. Chris Joyce and somewhat representing the Voter Information Committee um, with uh, two comments. Um, one of them is a few years back you wrote a great brochure describing what CPC does, its uh, mission, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd like to encourage you to do it again uh, if you can. And uh, also uh, I'll be leaving the committee at the end of June, but we did recently a chat about uh, town meeting and some confusion there was amongst our voters about where the funds come from and and uh, yeah anyway we'll leave it at that um, so uh, voter information uh, will probably approach you about maybe a standalone program at some point between now and the next uh, <coughs> the next town meeting thank okay. you yep. thank you very much for your input Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> Nobody else bites except me. You're okay. Wait a minute. Is there back. bait at the end of that rod? <laughs> mm. I bite back. Mm. Uh, Elaine Shovel in Real Estate and Open Space Committee. My only uh, 
concern or a question is uh, about the copies. Uh, 13 copies of the application. Is there a way to scale that back uh, so that we don't have to make so many copies to hand in? I mean, can more of it be done electronically? You know, I know we did a thumb drive, but do we still have to make a lot of copies and the thumb drive, or, you know, what's the procedure going to be? I'll open it up to the board. I'm going to start with Kathy. <laughs> well, there's been lots of talk about going electronic, but um, we weren't quite ready. We're not really quite ready yet, and we're not really. Okay. Most of the members of the board aren't ready to give up their paper copies. Okay. And we have a nine um, member uh, committee. Mm -hmm. And then a copy goes to the library, a copy goes to the town clerk, copy, whatever. That's the reason why there's so many copies. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it just, you know, seems like a big ton of paper, <laughs> you know, going out. But, okay, whatever you decide, we certainly do. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Anybody else in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All the needs and wants of the town. Yeah. There you go. We've got the information we need, apparently. Okay, I'd like to have a, a motion to close the meeting, the public informational meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Again, roll, roll call vote. I, I, do I have to say my name again? Joe, use your name, please. Joe McParlin says aye. David Nix says aye. Kathy Green, aye. John Ketchum, aye. Elizabeth Harder, aye. Thank you very much, folks. <coughs> okay, now, can we have the, the regular, we're in the regular CPC meeting now. Um, vote to approve the minutes of April 7th, 2022, and May 12th, 2022. So moved. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Um, we have a second. Discussion. I just sent one minor correction. Go ahead, John. You get the floor. It's just a minor edit, that, a sentence that needs to be completed on the, I think it's the April minutes. Did, did you get my email there? I don't think so. <laughs> Where is it, John? It's the, bot, the second to last line on page one. Maybe it's your family? was not the work that was done in this room. She is very pleased with the work the studio did in the restoration. What? I see it now. I have your email. See the uh, one correction in May 12 min minutes. Oh, the next May to minutes, last sorry. line oh, on the May. first page is incomplete. It's missing something. Right. May 12. It's like a sentence that starts with spent was questioned and explained. Questions, but she felt that was good. Oh yeah, we kept playing with this, so something dropped out. Mary thought the question was good. Question explained. Can I just go back in my notes and correct that line? There's something missing. I amend my motion to, uh, I move to approve the minutes of April 7th mm. and May 12th with correction, with noted correction. And is there a second for that? I'll second. Okay. It has Just to do with anticipated revenue. There's a line or two missing now. That's what was spent. That's what's, there's a, there's, I know that's okay. missing. All right. No. All right, discussion. Any more discussion? On the amendment? No. Questions. Can we have a vote? Starting with Elizabeth. This is just for April, right? Yeah. Uh, no, this is no, for this is for, May, this is for both. The, April seventh and May twelfth. With the correction of, um, with the noted correction for May twelfth. So, so I I don't want to change anything, but I do have a. I read both the minutes before I got here, and on the May minutes, I think it was May. There was a big discussion about how to um, let everyone in the town know about CPC, right? And how how others do it. And I'm, I'm doing, like you were doing outside of town, I'm doing a lot of inquiries about that from other CPCs, actually in from my housing committee and how they get it out. And I saw something about Facebook in there and they thought that that might not be legal. And I know three other towns that have their own Facebook. That's just an example. But I'd love to put something together and brief it back to you guys when I, when I find some more information. Okay. Unless, that, unless that, you guys came. That, I didn't see you come to any conclusion on that one. But that's why I was asking. Okay. That, that's fine. Yeah. 
So, we are where we are? Yes. yes. We are voting on the minutes. That's right. Elizabeth Harder, aye. John <coughs> Ketchum, aye. Kathy Green, aye. I don't think we have to tell each other our names. because No, we don't. Not at this point. <laughs> aye. Aye. All right. Done. Can I just Kathy. ask? Don't be embarrassed, Kathy. Can I just ask real quick? Sure, go ahead. Is that what Joe wants to talk about? Agenda item for next meeting, maybe? Yes. All right. That would be appropriate. <laughs> All right, we're on to old business. Uh, follow up on the town's affordable housing trust. Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> so I reached out to the other towns um, about with the questions that had been asked the last time I presented this information um, and heard back from most of them. So um, this is the responses from Brewster are. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust does not give the CPC copies of its balance sheets during the year. Um, the trust gives one financial report about their about what they're doing with CPA funds to the CPC. That's all they have to disclose to the CPC about their money. Um, right <coughs> now, the Brewster. Affordable Housing Trust has about 1.3 million in their bank account, of which 800,000 did not come from the CPA and 500,000 did come from the CPA with designations, though it's not just free. Um, and there were um, two Affordable Housing Trust articles on their town meeting warrant, um, so they were given custody and control of an affordable property, um, and they get to run that, and then the town is transferring 375000 to the housing trust in fiscal year 23, which is half of the estimated short-term rental revenue. And then for Brewster only, because they're the only ones who have a CPC member on, on the Affordable <coughs> Housing Trust Board that we know of, um, the um, representative from the CPC is recommended by the CPC and then appointed by the select board. Okay, so that, that was Brewster's answers. Um, and then, Orleans, which has been really busy. Um, the, the finance director, the, the um, Affordable Housing Trust does not give um, balance sheets or anything to the CPC, but the finance director provides um, all the info monthly to their finance committee so they can get the information if they want through the finance committee. Um, and then um, and then they have the same thing with the current balance. Their balance is about 1.2 million um, <coughs> with 875,000 is set aside for the hack project at 107 Main. Um, so there, those funds are in, are encumbered, as they say. Um, and then um, there will be more. They will be getting eight hundred seventy-five thousand dollars more, thanks to the town meeting. Um, but. That will be coming back once Hack gets supposedly once Hack gets their ARPA funds. So then it'll go back to the CPC. Um, so that and they're doing it by bond. So the CPC is responsible for the bond, and then when they get the ARPA money, they they will rescind the bond, and CPC will not have to deal with it. Um, and then 
Um, their affordable house trust funds are maintained and managed by the town's finance <coughs> director. And reports are distributed monthly and are part of the Munis accounting system. Um, and every expenditure by the trust passes through and is approved by the finance director. Um, and the balance in the CPC portion of the trust's money is included in the monthly financial report, which is distributed to the CPC and Affordable Housing Trust. So did that, does that make sense? Anybody want to discuss what that really means or anything? Those were liens? Um, the, last one, the last one was Orleans, yeah. the first one was Brewster. Um, and if you recall, Brewster's the one where they have um, Jill Scalise, who is the housing coordinator. Um, and they also have Donna, late of this committee. Um, so they really have strong oversight not necessarily oversight, but they really know what's going on in the Affordable Housing Trust. It is not opaque. Um, and Jill Scalise's job is to help everyone that's dealing with housing work together, know what's going on. Um, and so, you know, Brewster is a special deal, one of the reasons they're doing so. Um, and their voters understand it, and they just bought the C camps. So they're going to be doing a lot. Um, and Orleans has also been doing really good work in the past. They got the, um, if you recall, it, it came to us called the Penrose Project, which was their project um, <coughs> turning the old Cape Cod Five headquarters into housing. Um, they bought the Governor Prince Hotel and that land that they're going to um, not, I don't, th I don't think that's all gonna be housing, but there's definitely going to be housing on that property. Um, and Orleans is very close to, if not at their 10%. That's remarkable. So. Question. Yes. Uh, hold on, John. Um, we're gonna go around the board we're going to start with Joe okay questions for a little one question to make sure to clarify I, I thought I heard you say in Orleans the finance director approves where the money's going to go every expenditure by the trust passes through and is approved by the finance director so he could actually say no so he has control um, it sure seems Interesting. like it the way that's phrased it sure <clears throat> you know that's one of the reasons I things writing because, you know, it makes it clearer for when we're discussing mm. things. So yes, it, that's what it says. And it all goes into Munis, which is the, um, you yeah. know, government financial thing. We do the same thing here, Joe. Yeah, okay. Um, when Carol was here, she, everything went through her for oh. approval. Okay, I didn't know that, all right. Yeah, and, um, there was a time where there was a question of whether or not the CPC, I don't want to say had the right to have the information, but it was after some discussion, it was made readily available for CPC. Okay. So, Carol, I'm sorry, uh, that was Carol Coppola. No, I got you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I was having just arrived, I'm gonna to listen to the conversation a bit more, but I'll okay. get back to you later. Kathy. Uh, no comment. John. What is HAC? Mm -hmm. Housing uh, Assistance Corporation. Oh. Huge. I know. I get HAC, HAC. I'll them all confused sometimes. They help all of the, they help all of the lower cape and above. Yeah. The money. Who are they? I, I'm it's sorry, it's I a think. corporation. It's, a, it's an HAC, HAC does all that is housing for Cape Cod with <coughs> C <coughs> Private or governor? It's 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 nonprofit. Five hundred one C three. So it's an independent nonprofit organization. Oh yeah. And when you say they do housing. So housing, like they have a, a person on my housing committee was uh, somebody was in charge of Section Eight housing. It's a whole office. They do Section Eight. They do shelters. They do housing, shelters. Affordable housing projects and development. 
they do uh, counseling, they do an energy program, they do tons. Anybody else? Uh, one final question from the chair. Elizabeth, did you look into Yarmouth at all? That's who I haven't heard back from. Um, I don't know what their update is. Um, did talk to them before, but I can't remember. And the reason I'm asking the question, when we established the housing trust, the town was going by the Yarmouth model. So right. I'd and be really curious if they <coughs> could come up with some information for you. And that was, uh, when did I do this? February? Um, this is why I write everything down. Um, yeah, I wrote it on the papers. I will find out for you. I will, I will get the latest update from Yarmouth and um, find the notes from, from the last time I talked to Yarmouth. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Is there anything else for Elizabeth? Hearing none, we're going to move on. Um, <clears throat> follow up on the CPC funding application. So, who wants to lead the charge on this one? <coughs> I'll, I'll take Go that. ahead, Kathy. Um, John worked on the formatting and cleaned it up uh, from the information that Carol and I had worked on, and uh, we sent it to the committee for final approval and to vote on tonight. I haven't heard anything else. I mean, there was no comments. There was no feedback. So I guess we've pretty much established that. Elizabeth, did it meet your like criteria for the enough meat to it? Yeah, I, I absolutely thought that it was as I say tough, but you know it it was as um, forceful as it could be. In this doesn't mean you have till December, so <laughs> which was what I was really worried about. Right. Um, so, no, I thought it was terrific. Okay, any other comments? John? Just I have a question for Elizabeth. Did you review the updated table, like the low income table? Yes, I, that was the, the new one. Account. That was the new one that I gave he, to. He made some adjustments. He just reformatted it. He just, I guess he wants to know if you took a look at it. You probably didn't even know it was I different. Didn't. Yeah. Because I just thought, oh, that's my chart, and I, <laughs> and I, you know, <coughs> but, um, you know, unless you change the numbers, I don't care how it, it looks. Intentionally change. <laughs> 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 so well, I, if he did, no one caught it. <laughs> so I'd like to make a motion to accept the uh, twenty twenty. We're still on the discussion oh. before you make a motion. I just had one question. Uh, you got for you guys is um, on the actual application. I, I like the simplicity of it. Um, but what you asked for is, is also detailed. But I, I, I'm assuming um, this cannot be populated online, right? Okay. I figured that. I just wanted to make sure. Right, John. Right, John. Yes. It cannot be populated. We and we had that discussion <laughs> a year or two or whenever. <coughs> I think I remember that. And I recall Bob Doan saying, "Those always end up being a mess when you do that." So. Uh -huh. We've we'll kind of beat that dog to death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, have, having them filled out online. Mm -hmm. You have to PDF have a file that you can fill in. You you have to have such a genius programmer, and the town does not. Well, we have one. Actually, in the nor school. does the county at this point. <laughs> I mean, you're great, but <laughs> but I mean, honestly, but, to set that but. up wouldn't wouldn't that drive That's you like crazy? That's like two buttons for John. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> I mean, I, my husband had to do that once, and it drove him crazy for yeah. two weeks. So, so I, I think we still need to think about online um, filling out the application, but we're not anywhere near that, and it requires some IT infrastructure that doesn't exist, as far as I've noticed. Mm -hmm. 
That's what I meant to say. Not that you didn't <laughs> have the ability, it's all right, it's all but right. that you the know, county does are. not have the ability, <laughs> which I'm working on getting. Mm. But that's another story. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so. okay, okay, well, enough. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Um, Carol, anything to? No more. Yeah. All set? All right, Kathy? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to accept the updated Community Preservation uh, Act Committee's uh, revised. revised application for funding year 2022 to 23. What is it? Yeah. <coughs> FY23, isn't it? FY23. FY23. We call it 2022 for whatever. And in addition, um, giving John the authorization to provide it online on the website, the application, and you know, put it out there on and also for Jan to make copies available in the selectman's office as soon as possible. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. I don't usually do that. We give them paper. We well, have yeah, we give them paper. We have paper copies. What, have we the past few yeah. years? Yeah. I don't remember. Okay, not a problem. <laughs> All right, so the motion, there's a sec. Who was the second? I'm sorry. I was. Catherine was second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. <coughs> Moving on. Okay, um, we're going to vote to return CPC projects outstanding open balances to the CPC accounts. You what? get the lead. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, First one for rescission would be make a motion to rescind. Oh, okay. Make a motion to uh, rescind the funds from the 2016 town meeting article number 37, which was the Brooks Park expansion improvement phase three project. Original funding was for 188,000. The open balance remaining is $3,686.26. Okay, there's a motion on the pennies? floor. Hold on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. How many pennies? 3,000. 686.26. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Next. Uh, motion to rescind the balance from the 2020 town meeting article number 31, Chase Library Door Project. Uh, original funding was for 15000 from Historic, and the rescission would be for $3,800. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? It's gorgeous. Yes, it is. I like it. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Next. Okay, now... Hinkley Spawn. <laughs> you want me to do that one? <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, okay. Um, I don't have that in front of me, but um, it's it's going to be the natural resource article. The total was Hinkley Spawn was six hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. There's a balance of two hundred forty five thousand one hundred eighty six dollars to be returned to the CPC. Okay. So do you have the <coughs> article number? Uh, Ann, do you have that? Hinkley's? I, I gotta go chase, I don't yeah. have, I, ch I gotta go chase it. No, give me one sec. Hold on, I didn't bring it with me. Hinkley's Pond 2018, Article 57. 2018. 57, did you say? 57. Hinkley's okay. Pond, meeting, uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to rescind the funds from uh, Town Meeting 2018, Town Meeting Article Number 57, which was the Hinkley's Remediation Pond Project. The original amount in total was for 650, but 575 of that was for the Hinkley's Pond Remediation part, uh, where 75 that was for the, was for the public access. right. So the rescission would be for 245,186 dollars from the original 575,000. 
There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. We went into the discussion about, go ahead, Carol. So I just want, just a clarification, because I know we had yep. discussion <clears throat> last yes. time. There's a lot of history here. Yep. So one of the questions was whether some of the funds could be repurposed to the other part of the project. Correct. Was that, it was determined that that well, couldn't happen? Can I answer that? Go ahead. You yes, so point. we wanted to just re read the, uh, the way it was written, right. and it was specifically written for 575,000 specifically for the remediation of the pond. Okay. The 75,000 was specifically for the public access part of the project. No, yeah, okay. There was no overlap. Yeah. And no ability to transfer from <coughs> one to the other. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Joe. No, we're good. John. Um, I, yeah, I have a question here which is, I don't recall Hines specifically saying he was done spending money on this. He did. He did, yeah, he okay, did. all right, I'm just double checking because I don't remember that. And I know I was reading, um, I think I was reading the minutes, I forget what I was reading, but I, I, I thought it said there would be some contingent task on it. But if he said explicitly, I'm giving the funds back to him. So, all right. Elizabeth. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, the motion on the floor. There was a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> None? Moving on. Um, there was one here that <coughs> the amount rescinded was $760,000 from the 2018 Article 50 section, and it was voted for. 722. Um, I wasn't at this meeting for this rescinded amount. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I do get updates through Munis, and I haven't seen this amount rescinded. So, I'm going to do a follow up on that for the board. It hasn't gone anywhere because I'm in the minutes. The minutes. I didn't say anything, but that's okay. Remember? All right. That's why I haven't seen it then. Okay. <laughs> that works. So, we're just going to. <coughs> okay. Um, next, discussion on CPC funding projects, visible signs and projects that were funded by the CPA. Um, there was a question the last time we were <coughs> together about what projects were funded and whether or not CPC um, the funding of CPC can it be attributed to CPC. In other words, that the taxpayers know what the work was done, where the money came from, for the work that was done. Um, there was one question about the library, and as I brought up the last time, um, there is a CPC placket on the corner of the library. Although it's, it's a small <coughs> placket, at, at least it's there, acknowledging that the funding came from CPC. What I can tell you for a fact is everything that the Recreation Department does has a CPC placket to go with each individual project, no matter where the project is. Um, as far as housing is concerned, I don't know the answer to that question. If, tr if the trust has done anything with um, for example, they use some of CPC money to, to purchase the mass line property, but I don't know, I haven't been up there to look to see if there's a placard of some kind sure there is. acknowledging there's the CPC <coughs> there's nothing funding yet. for that. No, there's nothing on that property at all. You and don't even know. The only reason you know what property it is is you can tell by the new gate. Right. Wow. Kathy? All right, is it okay if I read that information I gave you Go at the ahead. last meeting? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so currently under our terms and conditions section of the application packet, we state, upon completion of the project, the applicant shall identify that the project was funded by the Town of Harwich through the Community Preservation Act in its written materials about the project, including press releases, brochures, and similar materials. Examples from the Town of Eastham CPA Committee 
funding conditions checklist for their CPA grants under the section publicity, the grant recipient must acknowledge CPA funding in all materials publicizing the project. When feasible, historic preservation, open space, and active recreation grant recipients will prominently display a permanent exterior sign supplied by the CPA committee at the project site. Acknowledgement language to read, this project has been generously supported by the citizens of Eastham through the Community Preservation Fund. This is just an example of what other towns do. Um, so I think that it's something that we can maybe have a discussion about at some point, whether we want to maybe, you know, in order to publicize that more and get people to talk more about CPA funding, you know, maybe doing a little bit more in that area. Um, specifically, though, regarding affordable housing, traditionally my understanding is that, yes, support is of, by Community Preservation Act funds is mentioned. It's not broadcast because we don't want to, you know, they don't want to put signage up saying this is an affordable housing development. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why there's not signage for something like that. At least that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had um, a large number of open space purchases. For example, um, the Marini property, which we did with Harge Conservation Trust, which is on Church Street, Baroque, the Hall property up at Bell's Neck, Sutphin, with Harwich Conservation Trust, which is um, near the Lavender Farm, um, the Eldridge property, Cornelius Pond with Harwich Conservation Trust. I mean, those properties could have signage because they have kiosks there. So we could have something. And it, a lot of people bought that way, mm -hmm. you know, do, um, in addition to, um, I, I, I was pretty sure at the beginning that the Friends of South Harwich Meeting House had some signage, but I'm not sure it's still there any longer. Um, but I think at the cemeteries, we could certainly do something. We've, we've really done a lot of funding for the cemeteries. It would be nice to have some recognition. Well, the meeting house is well over a million dollars. Yep. <clears throat> um, the Veterans Memorial Park, that's going to be completed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I even think Hinkley's Pond Remediation, we could probably <laughs> do a little signage. Um, uh, and certainly... Uh, things that we might have done with the bikeways committee new trails you know that kind of thing so I think that the intersection where, where the public can see what we've done is like extremely important mm -hmm. and we're sort of sorely lacking in that area okay um, Carol you have the floor thank you um, I, I like the concept I, I do um, <coughs> yes, just a, a question and a comment um, so it sounds like what's being contemplated here is not just future projects, but thinking about projects already received that have already received funding and pursuing whether it's feasible to have some sort of sign or placard placed. Um, okay. Um, you know, I, I, in my experience, I, mean, I think while I like the idea, we need to be really careful about it because people tend to have a bad reaction to signs. I mean, more signs is not always <coughs> a good thing. So I think. It's just a matter of designing a sign, you know, or a placard, which is even less obtrusive, really, in some respects, that would be, you know, effective but tasteful and, and sure. that sort of thing. So, and I guess that would require that the CPC committee, the committee would take administrative funds and design or hire someone to design and produce these signs and have them available in enough quantity to cover all these projects. Elizabeth, thank you, Carol. Hi, it's perfect what Carol said because <laughs> I was going to say um, a similar thing in a different way. I think that if we tried to put co-funded by the CPC in front of every conservation sign that exists in Harwich, it would be a nightmare. But I do think that at the Conservation Trust kiosks, mm -hmm. we could put, ask them to put a, a sticker say, in, saying something broad like CPC funds contribute greatly to the preservation of open space. <coughs> something like that. And it wouldn't cost that much money because it would be the same thing 
all over the place. Um, and it wouldn't have to be specifically made. And then we could do the same with the bike path. There's that kiosk um, right down there. And we could put up a sign there saying the Harwich CPC contributes greatly to the safety of our bike crossings. Do you see what I mean? And then it would be, it would be uniform, it wouldn't be annoying, and it wouldn't cost as much because we wouldn't have to um, change the language for every different place. And, you know, I'm sure Michael would not have a problem with that, you know, working on the language with us. So that, that's my thought. Joe? I, I don't have anything to add. I just, I agree that it should just be one standard thing maybe, as opposed, because what Elizabeth has just said, that she said two different things with two different signs. But that's, I know that's not what she meant, so she's saying, what well, you were saying, Kat, saying, you know, it's just one line or two lines, and you could put that up everywhere, sticker, whatever, right? John. So, he did say at the beginning that that language is already in the, the agreement, right? So. That language of signage. Our, our language is specifically uh, about the written materials. It, so it doesn't actually, it could be interpreted as, as there's no obligation to put up. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We're just we're just having a discussion about we, whether right. we want to take it a step further. That's all. Okay. I mean, especially so. given in light of town meeting and everybody's saying they don't know what CPA does. Right. I mean, right. so I definitely support what Carol was saying, and I I think that it could be approached in a way that we have a single standard sign that we maybe spend CPC funds to design and make and require. I mean, I don't know how we do this, um, uh, you know, for previously approved projects, require people, we can request it, but for future projects, it should become part of the language, I believe, uh, and then give, give the recipients the choice of taking the standard sign or coming up with something different that they would then uh, run by us before we agree that it's right. the right thing. Um, and I, somebody just said, you, I think, Kathy, that that part of this would be addressing our publicity issue that we've discussed. So the more places this is up where people, at properties that people use, uh, and they're going to see the signs, and some of them are going to actually read them, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. Well said, John. Yeah. Here comes the mean-spirited person, me. <laughs> I, I just, we fund millions of dollars for different organizations. REC has a standard sign that they put up. And they took it on their own to do it because we requested it. It's a request. The library put up the sign as a request. South House, South How, How it's Meeting House, I don't ever remember a CPC sign there. I don't know the answer to that question. But we have certainly given Conservation Trust a significant amount of money for them. We shouldn't even have to ask. And that's what irritates me. <coughs> it's there. The money's there, they come to us, give us an application, give some acknowledgement to the taxpayers of the town where the money comes from. Anyway, I've said too much. Carol. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel that you know, HCT does give acknowledgement to the town in, in lots of different ways um, for the support of their purchases. But I think, I think if, we, if we think this is a good idea, and I, I think we do, generally, I think what I would suggest is that we um, uh, you know, come up with a, a proposal, you know, uh, you know, a proposed design or a budget for what it would take to develop a proposed design, maybe gather a couple of examples, 
from the ones you mentioned and maybe from other towns and just begin to pull this together as an actual thing. I, I do like the idea of a, a standardized sign. I think it's, it's branding, really. I mean, when you, when you want to get something out there, you want to receive Brand. something. So, um, yeah, let's, let's pursue it. In, in fact, this REC has ordered a couple of different, a couple of <coughs> signs. Um, they actually put one up and there's one still in the office at the REC office. Mm -hmm. So any one of you can stop in and take a look at it. I mean, it's, it's very basic, very simple. Eric will be more than happy to share the information with you. Then come back and we'll have a discussion. And if there's any other possible ideas. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Oh, sorry. Elizabeth, go ahead. Um, if, we're in fa if, if we're in favor of this, which we seem to be, do we want to add that line from, um, who was it, Wellfleet, about actual signage? I don't, can I address that? Go ahead, yeah. That's it was the town of East Ham, East and um, I don't think we're really ready to do that yet. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for discussion? Okay, moving on. Um, Discussion, perceptions of where the CPC is and where we're going. Should the committee be proactive with the town taxpayers and what the CPC has to offer for the town? That's a mouthful. <laughs> Discussion. Joe. Um, well, I mean, yeah, that, that goes to what I was saying earlier about getting some background on what others do. Um, but I definitely think, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know anyone, whenever I tell them, uh, oh, why, where are you going tonight, I'm going to the CPC meeting, they're like, what's that? I don't know anybody that knows what it is. You were saying the same thing about town, town meeting, and um, it's got to be more than just the website, um, social media, whatever it might be, to get it out there, you know. So, yeah, I definitely think we should push it. Carol. Um, well, I agree. I mean, I think public education is important. Um, I think we just need to think about what are the most effective ways to do that. I think, you know, um, there's certainly the, the local cable access <coughs> options, you know, public affairs discussions on, on the local cable access. I think the signage is a good I idea. Um, I think we discussed last time the um, maybe having some information available either in the motions book or in, in the <coughs> warrant that, you know, like a page that, that describes what the what the CPC is and how the funding is, is derived and, and how it needs to be spent. Um, yeah, we need a little outreach plan. Um, and I think there's a number <coughs> of different ideas that we've discussed in various times here um, that could be pursued. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I just think it's it's just been a real struggle to uh, get people to um, take a look. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, we can produce the brochures, we can go on the local cable, which we have, um, we could, you know, get interviewed by the voter information group, um, but if no one's going to look at it or listen. <coughs> And it's not just Community Preservation Act funds. It's, it's, it's sort of, in general, not understanding town finances and, you know, voting and how much of a say they have in the actual uh, spending of the town uh, funds. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, I mean, you were at town meeting. You listen to people get up there, and it's a, a lot of information they could have made them, it could have been, it was available to them, but they didn't take advantage of it. So, and I don't know what to do about that, you know. Um, I, I just, I wonder if every town has the same issue. You know, I wonder if uh, for the public information hearing, for example, if the turnout is as low as we have. <laughs> 
Nothing against you guys for showing up. I applaud you for showing up. <laughs> Thank you. John. Yeah, well, I brought this up the last time and got roundly dismissed, I think. But I'm going to say it again, and, uh, <coughs> partly because Joe was mentioning it. It was Joe when I wrote that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to survive right now. Is this like Facebook? Yeah, I think, you know, it used to be everybody read the local newspaper, and a lot of people still do, but it's not quite the widely accepted means for sharing information in the community. And there, I don't think there is a single widely shared means for sharing information in the community, but I think that social media is becoming that one way or another. And it is a much broader problem than just CPC. It's a problem with taxpayers understanding why they pay taxes and what they get in return for it. Uh, but specifically, if I mean, CPC is sort of compounds that problem because it's a surtax and it's got very narrow restrictions about what it can be spent on. So it probably requires more effort to try to engage taxpayers so they understand what it is. I do think we should not just roundly dismiss the notion of figuring out how to use social media to engage the public. I'm not a social media expert. I'm not a social media user. But it is very clear to me that uh, that's <coughs> how everything is happening. Carol. Thank you. Um, I totally agree with John. And um, I, you know, uh, does the town have a Facebook page? I don't does think not. So. I don't think so. I, um, it, no, well, ahead. I mean, you, you know, because I think, I think the key thing, I mean, we, maybe we should think about this a little differently and not, um, not be so focused on, on communicating <coughs> the nuts and bolts of the, C, you know, the Community Preservation Act, because that's, a lot of stuff that you know just isn't that doesn't resonate with people and, and frankly they're busy with their lives but maybe the focus we should have and, and I think we're getting there is on what's funded that's what really matters that's what makes life more enjoyable in the town and if we had some either a, a Facebook page or access to another Facebook page that we could post on um, you know a, a project of the month funded by CPC um, with a little sentence or two at the bottom that kind of sums up what the CP CPC is and does. You know, so it just, it focuses the community's attention on the good that comes of this work and, but, you know, reinforces there's a, there's a CPC that administers this fund that does this, but in like two sentences, not two paragraphs. Right. What is it, 142 characters? Is that the Twitter limit that they eventually doubled? Uh, I, I, I know I'm, nothing about social media. I'm somewhere else. I'm just <laughs> thinking simplify it for the masses. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the idea of Project of the Month. So that, that's <coughs> John. The town does, has, I think, made some attempts along these lines by creating these uh, I forget what they call them, but you can sign up to get, you know, alerts. It's an alert system. And I get a random set because when I first heard about it, I chose like some random number of things that I would get alerts from the town about. But I don't think we need to get a little further along and most people don't know about it and so people don't just think, oh, I'm going to go to the Harwich webpage and sign up to get alerts from CPC or wherever. I think the broadly accessed social media uh, sites or whatever are what we need <coughs> to focus on. Carol. Kathy. Kathy. Um, uh, hasn't the problem, part of the problem been that, you know, like Facebook in particular, don't you have to have somebody manage it? Like in the town, they'd have to manage the 
Facebook page and the account and the membership and that kind of thing. Isn't that one I mean, of the things that, yes, it does need I mean, I don't know that much about it, but. Yeah. Is there a legal component to it? I mean, I am, for, I, I am not a Facebook user myself, um, but, um, you know, I think you need to, you know, there, there is administration, you know, there's an ability to allow certain people to post, but not others. And, you know, there's, there's controls that, right. you know, you're right. There's, there's some oversight and management of it that somebody has to be responsible. Mm -hmm. Well, for whatever, I was incorrect, and the sec my secretary here just corrected me. Um, on the Howitch, town of Howitch, Massachusetts page, web page, there is YouTube, um, Facebook, and Twitter. Well, well we <coughs> what that is. I didn't so know that. Into, well, YouTube is how you watch. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, so I everything is YouTube. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Well, that's probably what that link is, but I, I don't know what the Facebook and Twitter things are. We, we should. Yeah, right. Well, you'd have to be on that, Facebook you know, to access Facebook. That could be Facebook. just sharing. Yeah. yeah. If I on have my on Facebook account, I want to tell people about Twitter. how great the Harwich website is. I click on that Facebook button, and it posts a link to the Harwich website. That so, may be all that. So is. let's just say it may not be active. No, but if you hit if you hit if you hit the Facebook button, yeah, all these different um, I'm groups, just... groups have um, have their own Facebook page. So the community center, oh, they do. Right. Fire, ah. water has Twitter and Facebook. Grand Cranberry Golf Course is beating us. Brooks Free Library, oh. Chamber of Commerce, Police Department, Wastewater Information, and Howard's Cultural Center. You just yeah. that that to your point, John. The first the first page comes back, and those three icons are there. Yeah. And we just hit either, all three, any one of those icons, it tells you who's on there, wow. and they have their own site. I just I just that took me two seconds. Wow. We should all go <laughs> off. We should all go off and look into those things. Yeah. See what see what those departments who apparently have active or maybe not so active Facebook pages or Twitter accounts, whatever, see what they're doing. And then we can talk about what, you know, what we might do. And if there's questions about, I mean, I think it was Mary last meeting, you know, brought up questions about public meeting laws and public records laws. But if, you know, half the departments in town are doing this, there it might. Yeah. I'm wondering whether that's such a big problem. But yeah, to Kathy's oh, point. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Kathy. <coughs> Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I'm all over the place today. I'm sorry. So, so um, I looked into the open meeting law again because um, we had gotten a huge presentation about it at the assembly. And we cannot individually post our opinion. Kathy cannot say, wow, Penrose, what a great project. Look how it's going. That's a violation of open, open meeting law. Gates, yeah. But we can have a Facebook page that says CPC, and nobody else is allowed to post to our page, but <coughs> we can post like the fire department is always posting, you know, we're having a service for this, we're doing that. Guess what we just had? Oh, we saw, you know, this fire is out. So it's informational, um, there's no response. You can be informational, people can write comments. Um, you know, most I don't think most people read the comments unless they're like one of those people that are gonna complain about everything, you know what I mean? Um, and. Certainly, it's the kind of thing that could be, I mean, I could do it easily. You know, if somebody wanted to send me something and say, hey, the lights in Brooks Park are done, don't they look gorgeous? I could post a picture of it saying, the CPC <coughs> helped fund the new lights in Brooks Park, aren't they gorgeous? The alien you know, spacecraft have landed. You know, something like that. You know, so you, so we would be able to, you know, have a presence on Facebook um, without breaking any open meeting. 
That's a slippery slope we're mm -hmm. heading down. Why do you think? Why do you think? It's just from I, I'm not a participant in social media, yeah. um, but I I've learned a lot about it through my my kids, and boy, some of the some of the discussions whether it's political, non-political, or what can be ramped into something, or taken out of something. <clears throat> Boy, it's... it's it, but, but this kind of stuff is not. I mean, we're not gonna be getting, you know, any anybody who has, let's say Kathy and I have the administrator code to run the Facebook page, right? If I'm on and I happen to notice in the comments that there's something completely inappropriate, um, I can immediately take it down. So could Kathy. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not like the true. CPC is going to get spammed with, you know, because we're, we're not doing anything political. We're not, you know, supporting or against abortion. We're not trying to figure out the border. You know, that's not us. We're just giving money to the town to help make things better. So. We're not going to get those horrible, you know, kind of things that happen. Can somebody run the public talk about Facebook? Go ahead. Yes. Sure. Not to sound repetitive, but would you please identify yourself? I will. Again? Thank you. Mary, no, kidding. Chris Thanks. Joyce. <laughs> So you just got an offer uh, via text. I guess that's sort of social media, Chair Nixon, um, from the uh, library through Ginny Hewitt, who will post whatever you'd like on there. And then just a bit of a correction on uh, the administration on Facebook. Um, you can set it up so that no one can comment until you've screened that comment and allowed it on. Yeah. So. Oh, if different. you look at the library's page, you're not going to see anything untoward there. Yep. But and <laughs> Channel 18 also has a Facebook page. Uh, and if you peek it there, you'll see their, um, you know, they, they post, oh, this meeting is now available, that kind of thing. But if you set that up, right, you, 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 you can only have one author, one person actually post that stuff. You can stop. Uh, actually put things on. For example, if I went to all four of these major entities that we give money to and say, give me your three top projects in the last three years, and I went and took all the pictures, who would I give that to to put on Facebook? You'd, you'd post it on Facebook on, would, that pa on that page. The administrator then would see it before it got really posted, yeah. could screen it out, screen That's it in. Yeah. That's what so, I'm asking. Okay. So yeah. whoever okay. is the admin... And yeah, you can, the have, admin. You can have more than one, okay. I believe. Um, and um, and so if, if let's say, you wanted to do that, then whoever the admin was would look at it and go, well, that's inappropriate, or, oh, that's gorgeous, and post it. Um, I didn't know you could. I knew you could do that with posts. I didn't know you could do that with comments. <coughs> that's fabulous, because then there's no problem. Carol? So um, I think Chris's mm -hmm. comment makes, raises an important um, op, you know, piece of this, which is you know, the offer from Vinny to post on other sites. The whole point here is not just that there's a Facebook page, but that your content gets shared with other Facebook pages that have other networks. So if we get into a situation where information from the committee is shared with the Channel 18 site, with the library site, with the, you know, all of the various town sites, just there, and maybe the chamber site, and maybe, you know, Harwich Conservation Trust site. And then all of the people who are in that network see that information. So that's the whole value uh, of doing it. And maybe if we want to take a baby step, uh, the first thing would be to try to identify some, site, some existing Facebook pages that would accept some content as opposed to creating our own Facebook page. I mean, I'm, I'm supportive of either. Either would be fine, but you, that you can't do because we we have to have the CPC, you know, our committee, which can then try and 
and post on other things. But it can't be one of us because then that's open meeting law violation. I see. Okay. Because that's me technically talking to everybody else outside a meeting. Okay. Because I'm, you know, showing you something in a public, you know. <clears throat> so, so step one would have to be <coughs> setting up our own Facebook page, which John. I thought I understood that what Ginny was offering was to post CPC content on the library web correct. Of what library Facebook account. Is that correct? I'll read the title first. Can you see that? It's sure, go go ahead. Thank you, Ginny. Yep. Chris Joyce again. Um, the benefit to CPC is they don't have to manage it, meaning the page. We already have a page and we already share these kinds of posts for other organizations. So you don't need to set up your own Facebook page, at least now. Right. Yeah. That alleviates a lot of the stress. She, for and I'll also say it's, it's uh, well, uh, it, it reaches a lot of people. It'll do. <coughs> yeah. So we would just send her a PDF Carol. So I think I, I've done a little bit of this in the past. I mean, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. You, you, ha, you know, the key is the visual, you know, having something eye catching and a couple of lines of text that goes with it. And then whoever posts for the library would, would use that material and schedule it. Okay. For the board, I understand the familiarity you have, Elizabeth has, John has. Some of us, I'm not comfortable with this because I don't <coughs> fully understand it. Um, what happens with the legalese is that if you, have con if you have one individual posting information, does that information come from the board? Or is it the individual that's doing what Jan does, goes through the minutes, looks at what's there, and then posts something? I, I've got a lot of questions for that. Well, so I think that um, we would probably have some pretty basic content that would already be in the public domain. I mean, I, I think anything that we would want to post would be something the town meeting already decided. So it's not like there's any deliberative quality to it. There's nothing provocative to it. It's just sharing a picture of a project with a description of the project and maybe naming the organization funded by CPC with maybe a couple of lines, you know, a line about, you know, defining what the CPC is. Very, very basic information, not not getting into nitty gritty deliberations of anything. No, okay. okay. All right, now I understand. Yeah. I got it. It'd Thank be you. like a press release. <laughs> That's your <laughs> Go ahead, John. So taking another step from that, if I may, if you'll indulge me for a moment. Yes, sir. You have the floor. What Carol was talking about is posting basically showing something that's already been done. But the other, the other concern that the whole committee has, I believe, is informing the public about what's about to happen, like this meeting. And it, that gets posted in newspapers and other things, but not on Facebook. So I should think that we would want to also post an alert about public meetings that we're gonna have, or an upcoming deadline for applications also, if we're going to do this through the library, we would want to be talking about that now, since we only have a few more meetings before that's going to have to happen, and have some kind of plan to get that information out as well through that channel. If we, Elizabeth, if we, I suggest we <laughs> quickly. To, thank you, Doc. <laughs> Uh, we still discussing this? We are. Oh, hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Um, <laughs> hold on. I, I believe the best way for us to do whatever we decide to do on Facebook would be to introduce our presence online by sending pictures of what we paid for in the past. Get people used to us. In between every third one, 
we could say, by the way, do you know what the CPC is? Go to this. Or we can explain a different rule at the bottom of every picture. And then, like, after we've gotten them used to the CPC being a presence in their Facebook lives, then we can hit them with the information and the coming up and the deadlines and that stuff because they will have been um, introduced to us in a friendly manner and so then they'll be interested in whatever we have to say in the future. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, but that's gonna take some significant <coughs> time. Jenny, please, help. Pardon my appearance, I would have been here, but my allergies are killing me. Yes. And so, but when I heard the discussion, I text Chris, but it seemed to be getting a little confused. And I was like, no, I have to get out of my sweats and go down there. Because <laughs> we do have, Thank the library you. has a Facebook page um, and Twitter, which isn't used as much. It's more used, it is used by more decision makers on the Cape, go, use Twitter than like if, if there's something like storm preps, I, that's when I tend to go on in the library account and, and put that out. It doesn't get out to the community as much as it gets out to like the Cape Cod Times, we'll pick it up from that and things like that. So, um, so there's that too. But anyway, yes, you would send us a PDF or um, photos. I liked your idea of the project of the month is a good way to go look at past ones. And we'll also suggest maybe um, contacting the Chronicle because I think they're always looking for, you know, um, content. So a nice photo and a little feature article every so often on the projects. Not, you know, I, I know when there's a big project, there'll be a whole long article, but just, you know, a snapshot of here's this project was just completed and, or, or not, you know, but people using or uh, taking advantage of whatever the project was. So <coughs> if you, I, if you all decide and, and probably want to decide on who is going to do this to come up with the content and then just share it with us. That's good. And also, um, I'm a librarian, so we tend to be like very much in the, here are the facts, blah, blah, blah. People don't want to read that. That's not, that's not social media. And so uh, one of our librarians um, manages our Facebook page, and she's good about putting things in like, you know, more fun terms. And, and so we could have her work with whoever you want to designate to help. We wouldn't post anything without it being the way you want it but also had to, you can't get every post approved by all of you, right? That's, it's that's, too many yeah. opinions. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and if you didn't like the, the way it was coming, it could be structured a different way, like, you know, um, however you want it, whatever you want the content to be. But we already do that for a lot of um, organizations, and we do need something, we do, we do need um, more of a town presence. It's difficult for the town to have one because again, like you were discussing with the comments, and you really, aren't to, a town site is not really supposed to turn off the comments. Um, legal issues there, and I, you know, I don't know if that's all been decided, but I think that's what prevents the town itself from having a, a big site. Um, and the other thing tends to be, it's not the Facebook pages and your followers, it's sharing it on these local Facebook groups, that's where you really start seeing um, the, uh, not just the reaches, that's how many people view the content um, for, uh, there's a formula for how many seconds they may have looked at as they're scrolling by, but there's engagement and that's what you really want is people who really read it or looked at the photo or commented or shared it with their friends. So the Facebook groups really have gotten so big, that's kind of the way to go. But first you have to get the content out there, and then any of you could share that with um, any Facebook group that you're on. You don't have to comment, you're just sharing the information. So you're not violating open meeting law if you that's, just share, share the post. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jenny. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much. comments now, start with John. I think I have anything to add. I think this, that Jenny added some clarity here, and I think we should follow what she's suggesting. Choose somebody here to be the contact. And take some simple baby steps. Joe. 
no, I, I don't have anything to add. I, I, uh, I, I don't know if people know this, but the, every town, someone sets up a Facebook page. So if you go into Facebook and you search Town of Howitch, there's a Facebook page. If you like it, you'll, you'll get stuff on things like looking for uh, someone to fix my fence, looking for if Ginny's gone, but to, if you attach it, if you attach CP to that, it's, it's it's usually the biggest page in that area. Yeah, yeah. we have yeah. I love Jones Harwich and Harwich Old Timers are the two biggest. Harwich Old Timers is that's monitored. a different word. Yeah, um, I love Harwich is not as monitored, but you know it try that one tries to stay away from politics, but I don't think. CPC funding would be considered public. Yeah, it could possibly be. So, um, Carol, anything else? Let's do it. Kathy, you've been quiet. I'm not on Facebook, and I don't intend to be on it, so <laughs> leave me out of this. Okay, so um, I think the special what it boils down to yeah. is designating a member of the, <laughs> a volunteer from the volunteer committee to strike up. I will volunteer for this because I know this and my husband knows this and I'm friends with Jenny. Okay. And um, so, uh, so I think I would be happy to, to make the first attempt at coming up with some posts and, um, you know, which I would email to you all to give you a, an idea of what I'm, what we're thinking of, um, and if you know if those were approved by you guys via email, I could then send them to Ginny and say, "What would you make it look like?" And she could send it to all of us, and then if we like it, we could get to work and really See, do that, it. See, there's a problem there. I don't know if that violates the open meeting law. We're having a discussion about a particular thing that you're going to put forward. And we're not doing it in open session. You're doing it through email. Can I just say something? Go ahead, Carol. Why don't, why don't, um, why don't we <coughs> do what you just said, Elizabeth, and why don't we discuss that at the next agenda? And I, there's no time pressure to get this done, right? So why don't you do that? We'll share it and discuss it on the next agenda. And, and Ginny isn't here anymore, but I think the way many pages are, are uh, administered is they they can schedule things way in advance so we could come up with 12 months of projects we could identify the dates that we think are really crucial to, to have posts for this date or that date it's an and answer. those can all be scheduled in advance um, and we would just work with the Ginny and her crew to to do that appropriately in the so, meantime the entire board could look at it and it's all sort of laid out so it's know, approved yeah. and then we move forward right. Then it would be. That, that's a very good idea. Then the pictures would be presented at a public meeting. You're so smart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, one great project to start with might be the new playground. Beautiful. That's complete. Is it done? It's complete. Wow. That would be a good one. Carol. The other yeah. thing, and Elizabeth, it sounds like you're tuned in on this, is identifying maybe in addition to um, Ginny's site, maybe there are other Facebook pages that would also be interested in this contact and we could discuss whether we could reach out to those organizations and also see if they'd be willing to post some of this. <coughs> what about other organizations that the CPC funds, such as open space? Could that be included in, or housing, or recreation, or conservation? Included so now. I'm not now, sure what I'm doesn't probably. what doesn't violate open meeting law is any of you who have an idea can email them to me. <coughs> as long as I don't share them with any of with anybody else out of the public. <laughs> reply to all. <laughs> so yeah, I, <laughs> as long as I don't reply all, as long as nobody hits reply all, if you want to send me anything that you think would be a great idea or a good picture you like of something, that's allowable. Okay. So, again, going back to the other 
the other entities that CPC funds? Could they be included in some way, shape, or form in, in a format like this? How do you mean that? If they, if the, if open space came with a particular project that they wanted to um, put out there that wasn't going to be done through executive session. Um, and I'm, I'm not following how you mean, like, so are you saying okay, that? Okay, so let me, let me use rec <coughs> recreation as the okay. example. Um, we want to build a new ball field. So as, as this is working out to have something on Facebook, could recreation come before us and say, oh, we're considering this, we're putting an application in. Um, can we get more information out through Facebook to the general public? Isn't that what this is supposed to do? Mm, I don't, uh, not really, no. That's too much specificity. I think you want to get the, the global thing of what we've done, what we're do, going to do. Like recreation, they just have a Twitter account. They don't even, they don't even own Facebook. Right. So The other three that we service don't, are not on this thing either. So. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you've answered that question for me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just thinking outside the box. That's all. I was going to think, Elizabeth, unless you're going to do this, I was going to research those other three towns around us like you did, specifically to CPC and see what they do. That'd be great. Okay, and then I'll get back to you and what they do and how, they're, how long they've been doing it and what they're putting out there. Right. That'd be great. Joe, Anyways. get back to me on that. You? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, so... Carol and Elizabeth, you're not a subcommittee. You're just helping. So we don't have to deal with the legalese of that. Um, is there anything on anything else on this particular subject? Okay. We have a start. Not helping. <laughs> All right. Um, can we add anything to the CPC town website? So um, <coughs> I was just looking at what's there right now, and there's a couple sort of obvious things that probably need to be done. One is last fall we posted a list that maybe you made, Kathy, of uh, projects with card. outstanding balances. That should be, right? We did. It's there. Somebody did. <laughs> um, that sounds nasty. <laughs> yeah. That That's like printing, like, who owes back taxes. <laughs> yeah. List of open I'm uh, not sure I no, did that. Backwards. They haven't spent all their money yet. Oh. Uh, not they owe money. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. classic. <laughs> Go ahead, okay. List. The, the, the link on the website is list of open balance projects. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I didn't give that to you, but the, the finance director may have given that to you, but that's, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, continue. What else is on there? No, I, I gave that to him. <laughs> you let me take the, the ball for this. It might just need to be rephrased somehow, yeah. too. <laughs> projects still in, you know, so not uncompleted projects. Wanna... Incompleted. There, Incom there, is, there, there are two documents on here. One is a list. And probably Jan actually prepared the list. Sorry, Jan. It was a cheat sheet. <laughs> cheat you sheet. guys insisted on putting it on the website. Okay. Well, I did so not. I'm like want completely it on absolved. Of this. <laughs> I'm suggesting we should have an up to date cheat sheet uh, posted on the website. There's two things, though there's the cheat sheet that just lists the projects and the original amount and the open balance amount. Um, and then there is a single document, a single PDF file, which is all the fall status reports for all those open balance projects. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. That's, of, a lot that's a lot of stuff that I don't think anybody's reading online. Right. Yeah. I'm not really sure that is necessary. No. Okay. I, so should I take Elizabeth, one? go ahead. I, I think especially as we're as you're revamping um simple is better for now and i think we just have a list of um 
you know, past projects include, and then this year's project are, da da da, and nearly completed are, and we don't have to give like the money that they haven't spent yet, because like that, I don't know why, but that seems intrusive. <laughs> Okay, so well, you know uh, something actually to put on to put on the list of open balances. I don't have an issue with that. I think it's useful. It's a sort of detailed information that I don't necessarily <coughs> on the spur of the moment where to go find. Right, open balances. You, you and that's it's it. just for the committee. It's like, you know, what are the open balance projects? Where are we with that? I, but for the, uh, the other informational that goes isn't along with that isn't necessary. Jeff. I'm not talking about posting this on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I'm just, I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm not sure. I, I can understand the need for it for the committee. I'm just not sure the need for it on the town website. Right. Just the open balances. So far. That's just the list. The cheat sheet. Is that what you're saying? Down there? The cheat sheet. We're going to talk like about that this next. Right now. It's what? long. Yeah. yeah, so? It's not. All right, so let, let's cut to the chase. What's the pleasure of the board? So do you want me to do this? No, hold on, hold on, Jim. What's the pleasure of the board? Do we want this information posted online or not? Plain and simple. Joe? I, I don't have a problem with it. Carol? I'm fine. Kathy? Um, I think it could perhaps uh, open up more questions than provide answers. That's all. That's just my personal opinion. John? I think it's a good idea. It's a place uh, hopefully some, some people are interested in this sort of thing. And I don't know why we wouldn't make it publicly available. It seems like part of us being transparent about what's going on with CPC and CPC funds. It may be do too detailed <coughs> for a lot of people, but it's not part of it's not part of any public education uh, program. It's just trying to be transparent with the public and making information available for people who want it. <coughs> but Elizabeth, go ahead. Thank you, but it's not our transparency. Do you see what I mean? It's it's fine to print the list of projects underway and put it that way. But putting the numbers with it, that's not our information to give. That's their information <coughs> to give. Do you see what I mean? So we're not the ones determining how much they're paying for toilet paper on this project and how much they haven't spent yet because they haven't gotten a contractor and all that. That's <coughs> what the money tells them. And so that's their information to share. Our information to share is that we gave these projects that are ongoing, if you want numbers, you can say how much we gave them, but it's not our information to share what they're in the middle of doing with our money. And that would lead people to like scream at, well, you know, the CPC gave you money to build a boardwalk and you haven't built the board yet and you haven't finished the boardwalk and you've only spent half of the money they gave you, what are you waiting for? You know, I think, I think too specific opens up a can of worms, not so much for us as it does for the people and projects we gave money to. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm, I'm a, again, I'm in the middle here. Um, I'm gonna bring this back next week till we have a full board of a next meeting. So we have a full board and we can vet this again um, because essentially it's three to three. So, can John, I just go ahead. Point yeah, go ahead. Here. All this is is completely public information. This isn't, we're not giving detailed expenditure reports. What we're doing is summarizing in a compact form the information that is given to us at public meetings anyway. This isn't private information. But I mean, nothing's private in information anymore, really, if you want to find it. No, you I, can it, let's, find let's it. not. I don't want to get into this bait, debate any yeah, further. Okay. We'll bring it back till next next time. Kathy, go ahead. Well, John, you do want to post the this year's projects, correct? 
that were just well, that's in. yeah, I didn't I haven't gotten to that. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, th that's the other part. I do need to right. update. Right. Uh, I, I, the list. Yep. Is there? Is the? Do you? I'll send any, you the list. That would be great. I'll and send you the I list. Will, and we also had, which you asked for last fall, is the historic list. Right. Do we want to update that so it's complete as of now? That makes sense. Okay. Well, it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? I mean, it's well, duplication. Well, one is what got approved this year, right. and the other is the cumulative list that includes this year. Right. Okay. I, I forget what came out. If there's stuff I can do to, uh, no, I can just add. I can out, just add it. It's. Out. I have the list. I'd be glad to send it to you. Can I just make one more comment? Um, we went through um, a bunch of uh, <coughs> circles with the document, just improving the formatting and trying to get things straight. Um, the application. So I have, thank you. The application. So I have a Word file and a PDF file, which the PDF file is just exactly what the word file is i didn't give it to you i didn't share the word file with anybody just so we wouldn't get into yeah um, but i don't think i should solely be hanging on to the word file so i'm going to send you a send final. it to the cpc okay my my problem with that is if someone starts editing it and then shares an edited copy that's what led to a lot of the formatting problems to begin with. It's like in, in Microsoft Word, somebody starts messing around with the format of a paragraph, pretty soon the whole document get, gets very confused. <coughs> and, and it just took a while to undo a lot of things that had accumulated there. So I would like there to be a like, because presumably for the 2023 version of this, we're going to base it on the 2022 document. They're going to be not that many changes, hopefully, but hopefully we can keep the document as it is. I, I, I just John, what's your recommendation? My recommendation is I send to Kathy the final version of the Word document, and Kathy and I will be the keepers of that document, and then I will send to the CPC list the PDF version of that document. Done deal. And all it's going to be at this point is a change in the name of the PDF document. Okay, that's fine. Isn't Are you set, there, sir? You all set, sir? I'm done. Okay. Isn't there, like, sometimes I'll get sent a Word document <clears throat> um, or Excel, and it'll say, even when I want to go print it, it'll say, enable editing. Is there a way to send something to someone that says you are not allowed to enable editing, and that way they can't mess with it? You might be able to. Yeah, if you did. Used to be a way to put a password on a document. I could look into that. Uh, <clears throat> there are probably ways around okay. it, too. Yeah, <laughs> probably. That's fine. All right, we're going to, um, we're all set there. So we're on <coughs> the other now, and you're going to have to follow the bouncing ball closely on this one for the new members of the board. Um, and this is going to concern the Judah Eldridge properties. Um, how many years ago was it now? Four years ago? We funded the Judah Eldridge properties? 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, at one point in time, there was an issue with uh, Boston. I had long conversations with them. Um, I actually kept one of the conversations, and the Board of Selectmen um, did a turnaround or a turnabout publicly and what they said the money was going to be used for because you can't use CPC funding to offset taxes in any way, shape, or form. And the way the Judah Eldridge project was promoted to the CPC was um, we were going to fund the project, we were going to have the open space, and that was fine. And then it came out that, well, the <coughs> CPC money is going to be used to offset the tax on that property that hasn't been paid.
for a millennium, whatever the, the time frame was. And that all had to be stepped back and was stepped back by the Board of Selectmen. So it's a significant amount of property. Um, Approximately 25 acres. And the town administrator and the chair of the Board of Selectmen is looking to use CPC admin funds to help secure a survey, to do whatever due diligence they have. Um, would you like to chime in at any point? <laughs> <coughs> now, Gavi and I are on two ends. We disagree about certain things about this particular project. We agree about others. You've got the floor. Well, so four years ago, the committee voted to approve uh, approximately $367,000 for um, the preservation of open space for Judah Eldridge. Um, it was not a unanimous decision. Um, and then three years went by with no activity. We brought it up last year at a meeting for possible rescission of funding and the Board of Selectmen asked us to hold off because they were going to work on it. And now another year has gone by, uh, and some of this has to do with uh, changes in personnel at Town Hall, you know, lack of surveyor, lack of engineer, lack of, you know, whatever, perhaps. Some of it had to do with COVID. There was delays, et cetera, et cetera. But moving forward, if they are going to... Um, do the legal work that's required for this property to take it by eminent domain, but I think that's what they still want to do. There needs to be a survey done at this point, and they do not have the funding for the survey, and they're looking to the Community Preservation Committee to fund, uh, I think, believe approximately $28,000. That, that was the initial, they had an initial cost of $28,000 last year, um, but the, the, the proposal six months old. So, um, as we sat as we sat down and had another discussion about this, um, I contacted the administration again, and um, the email is because the quote is roughly six months old. We are suggesting. CPC approve up to 50k, fifty thousand oh. dollars. So um, that's a significant increase for six months from the twenty-eight thousand originally. I'm sorry, Kathy. I didn't mean to step. No, no, that's that's fine. So I mean, I would have just said that the request initially was for twenty-eight thousand for from administration funds for a survey, up up to this committee to decide whether they wanted to do that or not. So, um, based on some of the information that I got, um, I went into the administration cost articles, and there was one particular article that was brought back a couple of different times to town meeting, and it's STM 16, Article 3, for $50,000. Do you want to explain? Sure. What year? What year? Oh, oh, it, it's um, STM 16. 16, that's what yep, I missed. Article 3. So I think back in 2012, the Community Preservation Committee voted, I don't know if it was 2012, but we voted $50,000 in admin expenses for title research on properties that were brought before us. It turned out through working with legal counsel that it was uh, too particular in nature and it needed to be broadened. So I went back to town meeting in 2016. 16. Uh, uh, at special town meeting, and uh, the That's original STM right. The original article was rescinded, and a new article was put forward with broader terms. So that was approved. So the fifty thousand moved from you know one article to another, basically, in broader terms to assist with title research, etc., for properties that were brought before us. And so, I think what Dave is saying is that. Um, the Community Preservation Committee has uh, a separate admin fund specifically for that kind of thing. And to this day, no, it, none of it has been used. 
So um, the other thing is we have two other accounts. Well, we actually have three. Um, again, administrative article, that's ATM 15. So that's article 35, and the balance in that is 13073 cents. And that's the money we use to for Jan's to pay Jan. Well, administrative expenses include other things. Yeah, but that we specifically. Right, but potentially uh, we also use it for uh, if somebody, if we want to fund an appraisal like we did for the um, hopeless property, et cetera. So okay, you and I will disagree about that. It's a okay. different, and it okay. comes down to semantics because there's an ATM 21 for CPC oper operational cost. It's very specific. And that amount is $25,000. So, to who? It's, it's just another name for the admin account. It's another admin account. <laughs> So oh, money, oh, okay. That wasn't allocated. How much, can, how much money do we have in admin total? 50, 75, 85, 86, 87, $88,730.30. You, 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 you're they requested 50000 of that 80 Not really. No, they, they're requesting 50000 of this specific article. Which, which specific exemption? It's the yeah. STM, the Special Town Meeting Article 16. STM Article, uh, Year 16, Article 3, for $50,000. So that was the one that Kathy just explained. So they never used it. And no, it's not, we, for it's them not to them, use it. it's us. It's our administrative wow. expenses. It's our administrative now. expenses. They're asking. Board of Selectmen is requesting that we consider supporting $50,000 for a survey for the Judah Elders property. I think they're also saying we could take it out of the special town meeting warrant article since there's 50,000 and it hasn't been used. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. John, go ahead. Just a question. I didn't we approve another $50,000? Yes, we do, but that doesn't come into play until the new fiscal year. Oh, in a couple of weeks. Right. So that's okay. why I didn't So the I didn't include any of that. Or whatever that number was, plus another 50, right. really is what the balance. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. That. You're absolutely right. And and there are are there any is there any I don't recall any special language in this year's article for administrative funds, is for general administrative General administrative funds. Can I just say, we, the reason it was the amount that it is is because we had talked about potential legal fees. We still haven't got a bill from Copeland and Page, so. But I think the main question, though, is, 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 is the committee interested in supporting uh, funding the, a survey from administrative funds and in what amount? Not whether we have the money right. I mean, I think that's secondary. Right. We have the money. Well. So, go ahead, Carol. Okay. So, the original 2016 article to uh, support the preservation of the Judah Eldridge property, what was that money intended for? Purchase? purchase or well, I mean, it was originally intended, yeah, to purchase or take by eminent domain, domain, in which case they would have to pay off the back taxes. So they were going to use it to pay off the back taxes, well, but they really can't. And they can't. So um, two questions then to confirm. Uh, the use of that, any of that money for the purpose of the uh, survey, is that's outside the scope of the article? I mean, they can't use any of that money to do the survey? I don't know, to tell you the truth. Well, that would be my right. thought. But, but that would lessen the amount that. Well, they could always come back, but that's already been voted for that property. It's part of the due diligence. Why couldn't they just use some of that money from that article? And I then have the article from town meeting. 
Does anybody want to see what the article said for the Judah Eldridge property acquisition? Yeah. So. Oh, read. God, I'm going to read that. Read Sorry. It. <laughs> it sounds to okay. me like what you're saying is, as of right now, the CPC owns that property. No, 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 no. Who no. owns the property? The town of Howitch doesn't own the property. It's owners unknown. No. Well, well yeah. It's owned by there's, the there's heirs. It's owned by heirs. the heirs of Judah Eldridge. Eldridge right. yeah. But uh, isn't the town now, I mean, they made a big deal of, of this at all the select board meetings that they're putting together all this. Yes. And they're doing it through open space, and that's why you want the money. I, I, I'm not saying I now, want the money. Not, not you, but, but now, uh, now it makes sense that the money is going to, so the money would be going to the open space committee who would be overseeing the survey. Is that correct? No. 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 Who, who we don't handle any money. The, money. the town it needs the money to pay for the survey. They have found themselves in a conundrum where they do not have the funds to pursue eminent domain without having a survey to start with. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So we're and it goes back to the argument of eminent domain. So we're it, this voting, is really, it gets really intense. So we're voting to give $50,000? No, 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 no. That's what's in the article. That's an yeah. informational to let you know how much money we have in that particular article. Right. What I'm suggesting that we do is give them, they were looking for 28 for the original estimate that's now six months old, the proposal six months old. Look, look, let me just read part of this Go article, ahead. okay? Ahead. So this is Article 55, 2018, Judah Eldridge Property Acquisition. To see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, and or eminent domain for conservation and open space purposes, a parcel of land located on Seth Whitefield Road identified by assessors as parcel blah, 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 blah. Uh, and to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds, including without limitation, from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserves, $209,695.30, and under, undesignated reserve, one hundred fifty nine three hundred four seventy dollars for a total of 369000 and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen and or the Conservation Commission to apply for, accept, and expend any funds that may be provided by the Commonwealth or other public or private sources to defray all or a portion of the costs of said acquisition, including but not limited to grants and or reimbursement from the Commonwealth under something, something, something. So that was basically the article. <coughs> So we gave, so you gave them years ago $369,000. Correct. And now they want more. Correct. Yes. Essentially. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask Kathy to reread re the part that says what the money is for? Okay. There must be one phrase. Okay. To see, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, and or eminent domain for conservation and open space purposes a parcel of land designated as such and such. Um, record the deed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, to raise and appropriate their transfer from available funds, including without limitation, from the Community Preservation Fund open space reserves a certain amount and undesignated reserves a certain amount for a total of $369,000 and to further authorize the Board of Selectmen and or the Conservation Commission to apply for, accept, and expend any funds that may be provided by the Commonwealth or other public or private sources to defray all or a portion of the cost of said acquisition. In other words, things like the land grant. Right. Pretty vague, though. I, in terms of no, this well, you know, so no, no, I think Hold on for everybody. Hold on for a minute. I don't want to get caught in the weeds in this. Okay. This is simple. It's a large area of open space for the town. So we've already committed $369,000 to them. The next question is, they're having an issue. Do we want to continue with what we started? Plain and simple. Do we want it for open space? That's what you guys have to decide. 
because whether we give them thirty thousand or fifty thousand dollars, they're going to go out, do the survey, get to that point where they can make a decision on whether or not they're going to take it by eminent domain. So it, it's simple. Can I just complete? Go my ahead. Go ahead, here, Joe. Which is. It doesn't, I mean, I'm responding to Carol's question, which also occurred to me. I'm just, I don't hear where it says in any explicit way how the money Sorry. is restricted there. It says they want to buy the land, but they don't say what the money is for, except at the end for, dis for defraying the expenses of the purchase. And a survey could be considered to be part of the expense of the purchase. But, but they still don't have enough. But doesn't the defraying part up, it's, it's like saying his when you're talking about two different men. Doesn't the defraying costs go to the also accept money from the Commonwealth uh, and the, other places and not to. Get into the weeds. The our, simple question is what Carol asked. That is the $50,000 from SDM 15 that was never spent, mm -hmm. we, that separate from our own admin costs, yeah. that's a separate pot of money. Where is it? Can they use that? No, that it, it's there. That wasn't your no, question. It, it's going to be, it's there, and if we vote it, it's available to them. That's all I need so, to know. So, okay. Carol, go ahead. So, I guess uh, I would like to know if maybe council or someone could determine whether there's any reason why they can't use the money from the existing vote to right. defray the cost of the, the the original Judah Eldridge allotment of three hundred and whatever thousand dollars, that some of those funds could be used for the survey, and the you know if additional funds are needed for the purchase or preservation of the property, there <coughs> will be an additional request for funding through the application process. <laughs> I'm going to bang my head against the wall. So I just and it has nothing. You're asking yeah, the right. absolute correct questions. I just yeah. wanted to say that this number, 369,000, I believe it <coughs> came from the appraisal. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the Community Preservation Act says that we can't fund more than the appraisal. So the appraisal value at the time was 369,000, and I believe that's why that was the set amount you're right it does not say that i mean today i mean i mean i, I think to dave's point um right now we probably the understanding would be that the price per acre is greater now given the, the economics of yeah. yeah, the given you. real estate that is <laughs> at this time and it would be a real shame to um lose that property um, because they were not able to act on it. So they spent the 369000 No, they haven't spent anything. No, nothing's been spent. Property. No, nothing's been spent. If you look at John's so, open balances. So then <laughs> when they go, well, after they do the survey, then they have to go buy the property. So at that point, isn't it going to be $600,000 instead of three sixty nine? Could be. No, because they're going to take it by eminent domain. And what they have to do is they have to, when they take something by eminent domain, they have to put aside the value of the property in an account for three for years, the years. Oh, right. three right. years in case any heirs come forward. Right. Okay, so right. it's that. Yeah. But then you mentioned at the beginning that there was another article that gave them 50000 for something. No, 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 no. No, no. No. No? Okay. No. So take that out. Just to add to the comments. Is my question is, have they asked this question themselves? Maybe they already have an answer to the question. Why can't? <clears throat> why? I mean, have they thought about taking the fifty thousand dollars out of that original three sixty nine? And uh, John, you it's not real, but no, he's right. He's right. Are they in front of us right now? No. Yeah. Then it. It's a moot point. <coughs> when I'm suggesting you, you capsulized it correctly, it's there are people hovering to get a hold of that property. 
So are we taking action? Are we not taking action? Do we want to give them the 50 grand they can't come up with or the $30,000 if that's what the board wants to do so that we have access to that property or don't we? Plain and so it's, it's, it's not imperative this happens tomorrow, but it's getting to that point. We and we've been, we've been dealing with this particular project for four years. But we can't <coughs> give them new money. I'm sorry? We can't give them new money. Our year of giving money was over at town meeting, right? So we no, can't no, no. give them we, any we, money. No, you, you're, you're incorrect. This is admin funds, administration funds. <coughs> We're the ones that control that. No one else. Oh, we can do that at any time we choose. The admin uh, funds right. at any time. Right. Now I get it. Okay. John, go ahead. So I take your point and both points, maybe. I don't know how many points you were making. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I th no, well, I think it's important that that land not get acquired for development. I totally support that notion. And I think what you're saying, and I, you know, we spent a lot of time in the weeds, as you said. You know, I spent a lot of time <laughs> in the weeds. But I think I'd like to hear a few more opinions about that part of it. You know, whether that's what we want to do is just say, what the heck, we just want this to happen. So let's vote to allocate whatever it is out of that. This is $50,000 fund. I'd like to hear that. I'm, I'm beginning to think maybe we should just do that. <coughs> I'd like to hear what other people think. Okay. It's, it's, he's made a request for the board. So, Carol, do you understand what's... I, I totally understand. Um, I guess... And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, no, I'm passionate okay. about this yeah, particular no, no. thing. I, I get and it. And it sometimes clouds my judgment. I think... So, go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I understand the situation. I guess there, there's some information that we don't have. We don't, I, I don't really have a sense of why it's like kind of like the urgent, the current urgency. If there's some, maybe there's stuff going on behind the scenes. I mean, it sounds like this has been lumbering along and now all of a sudden we got to hurry up and, you know, provide this money. I can help you with that. Uh -huh. The amount of open space in the town of Howitch has gone from this size well, to this yeah, size. Yeah, I know, but. And okay. that, that's what this is all about. Okay. Um, I don't, as John said, I mean, I, I certainly support the preservation of this property. I feel like this is a little bit not the way to go about it. Um, and, you know, uh, obviously if we were to vote, I understand there's a pot of money that would be available for this purpose that's been voted in through town meeting, so it's available, um, but then it won't be available for another good piece of property uh, down the road. Anyway, I, um, I don't have a problem with providing the funds for this purpose, bottom line. But I, but I also think that uh, th there seems to be just mi a little bit of missing information that would have been helpful to have uh, for the committee. Go ahead, Kathy. <laughs> um, yeah, two things. One, um, we asked the question and it was never answered that if in fact the 369,000 <clears throat> is to be put aside for the three years for this eminent domain process and then no heirs come forward, <coughs> what happens to the 369,000? If it's not going to be used to pay off the back taxes, then does the money get returned to the Community Preservation Act well, let's fund? It, I mean, that, we <laughs> asked that question last year of the town administrator and it wasn't, I don't believe it was answered. Okay? It wasn't. Okay, and my second thing to say is that um, if they were seeking funding for something, I would have liked to have seen a written quote. I mean, that seems to be pretty simple. That, that's it. That's a leap of faith. <laughs> <coughs> I get it. This isn't the first time. That doesn't sound good. Tape ran out. Oh. <laughs> or something else is going on delayed. The tape ran out? 
Yeah, no, the red on. button's still on, so it's still taping. All right. Oh. Um, that was a joke. It was not a I joke. I think it might, the light that's flashing is fiber, so oh. it might be internet connection. No, oh, there we go. <coughs> Whatever. Let's see. Um, okay, so. Um, keep going. Elizabeth. What? I, <laughs> I have so... I have to be honest, I have been dealing for the past, I don't know how many months, with people saying, oh, by the way, we need money for this, that, and I don't know enough about this project that I don't care. Whatever, anybody, I really, I don't know enough. And, you know, I know the town is, is you know, saying that they have no money for anything. Um, Amen. And so if if people think this is a good use of our money, I will go along with it. I I don't know enough to make a to make a decision on my own. Thank you. John. I'd like to know what you two disagree about. <laughs> <laughs> That's Can between us. That's enough of board discussion. Um, anything else, John? That's helpful. <laughs> Carol? Well, I guess, I, um, is there any opinion from the Real Estate and Open Space Committee on this? Or is there is there any perspective that we're closer to um, could offer? The, the only thing I could, I mean, we have not discussed it, but I, I would feel comfortable saying that they support the acquisition of this property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they don't really have anything to do with, you know, funding a survey or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But they do support the acquisition of this property wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. unanimously. Mm -hmm. They would hate to see that it not go through. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Joe. Now, I, I understand the, all the parameters and <clears throat> in the specifics. I mean, now, we, now I do. <clears throat> but to Elizabeth's point, it would be nice to have some of that or some here explaining all that to us, but um, but you guys are here for that, and, and, and you've been involved in this for several years, which I have not. So uh, so I would I would definitely support it, just just to keep it going. You don't want to lose 25 acres of open space. That's the bottom line. Okay, what's the pleasure <coughs> of the board? I move that we approve 50,000. We don't even know it's going to be 50,000 home. I mean, it was just well, like a number they threw out. The last yeah. estimate was 28000 So we're just going to say, we, yeah, we have, they give them all the we, money they we, need from we, our admin account. We, we have to have a number. or We, we do can't. have the previous number in and around 28000 I can't find it in my emails. I would suggest, I would recommend to the board to give them $30,000. Okay, I'll move that we approve an allocation of thirty thousand dollars from from the FY ST, sixteen uh, S, FY from STM sixteen Article three from STM sixteen Article three for fifty thousand dollars. Article three was a fifty thousand dollar right. approved. We're approving a, an expenditure of up to thirty thousand dollars out of that administrative account for survey of the Vita Eldridge property. Land survey. Land survey of the Vita Eldridge property. Second. Is that what they said the land? You want to include the amount okay. of the 2016 special town meeting in Article 3 you want to keep in? Is that 50,000? I don't think it's necessary. No, no, that'll confuse the issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Article three was three hundred and sixty-seven thousand, right? No. 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 So when I said you talked about an article that was fifty thousand dollars, you said no, there isn't. But now you're talking about an article that was fifty thousand dollars. This is a general purpose administrative expenditure. Yeah. Right. right. The warrant article. It's it's different, Elizabeth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's a motion and a second on the floor. Discussion. I did hear a second. I did. Well, Thank Joe. You, Joe. Discussion. We'll start with Joe. I'm all done discussing. Okay. Carol. Mr. Chairman. 
Kathy. Okay. John. Okay. Elizabeth. What am <laughs> Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's done. Thank you. All right. Um, next agenda points. Anybody want anything on the next agenda? Yeah, I'll, I'll have some Facebook ideas. Um, and we mentioned something else. Oh, the sign, uh, the sign issue? Sure. Oh, Joe's gonna see what other towns do. No, no, sorry, I was, I was gonna help you. What the face, what yeah. Facebook? Facebook, Facebook. What, what, oh. what other towns are talking about, yeah. Okay. And one other thing, Elizabeth. For the chair, would you look in to see what Yarmouth does? Yes, I've got Please. It. Thank you. Sign Yarmouth. What was the third one? I'm sorry. Facebook. 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 And you wanted to continue the discussion on something. Um, the uh, what goes on the web page. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was something you wanted to wait until specifically we have PDF. Um, yeah. Yeah, until we have a whole board. But that's bring this up to the next. This is the cheat open sheet on project, project still in progress. Letting the right. be posted. Right. Progress. Uh, did you get? I'm sorry, Jen. Did you get what John just said? I think he's talking about the face, the website edition of whether or not we add the cheat sheet on the right. update okay. of projects still in progress. That's right. a better way of saying. Right. Far more diplomatic. I, I, I prefer the undiplomatic. <laughs> we'll also have the organization. Oh yeah, we'll reorg next time, and hopefully we have a full board. So. Um, I don't know, you, you, your individual boards, have they done their reorganizations <coughs> yet? No. Are you approved to be here? Yes, sir. That, those are the questions you need to ask your chairs. Oh, so you're saying that our, our representing committees need to vote us in as representatives to, to be to voted continue. back. Right. Okay. This but month, also, the BOS says yay or nay to y'all this month. Right. Not all of us, just those of us who expire this. Elizabeth's the only I'm one expire. who doesn't expire. Aren't I expiring? Everybody but Elizabeth. Oh. I don't think I expire. Yeah, because I expire. You're a select an appointee, but they'll still reapprove you. Yeah, for That's what the office told me. Expiring. I'm on my way out. <laughs> <laughs> meeting's July 14. July 14. Uh -oh. 1 4. All right, so please check with you the appropriate chairs I, to make sure that you're yeah. reappointed to this board, please. So, all right. I forget how, how this works with the selectmen. They presumably are taking this up uh, one Thank of these you. weeks soon. R right, at and some they point. they will inform the chair of, they'll inform you and, and right. the chair of the other. Okay. Hopefully. But if not, be proactive. Okay. So we don't get lost in the weeds. <laughs> okay, it will be an issue of conservation before it's an issue here. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, who else is the sele select person? We don't have a oh, select person. Yeah, we're still missing. missing one. Yep. Carol's one, and that's. Yep, that's it. We're and there's still a there notice up on the web page saying there's two of them. No. There's two. No, we have a board of nine. Right. It's supposed to be. We're missing one, the selectman's liaison. That, that's what I meant. It's, what I meant was there's two select board yeah, right. appointments. Okay. Um, anything else, folks? Move to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you very much, folks. Kathy? Oh. What? Can I have my papers back on Hank, please? Huh? You already packed up, but can I have my papers?